Hello and welcome to Express Drives. I am Arup. Now there are moments in an automotive journalist's career when he or she doesn't mind getting up at the crack of dawn. And what is the reason for my sleepless nights? Well, the name is Taycan. Porsche Taycan. The Taycan is the all-electric Porsche sports car. Now, the version we have is a base model. But honestly speaking, there's nothing base about this because it costs around 1.5 crores. Now, it is a well-equipped car. It uh, promises to have enough spunk. But at that price, would you go for an electric sports car or a good old petrol powered sports car well there's no doubt about it that the Taycan is the future but does that mean that you opt for it right now well we are gonna take a closer look at this car and tell you five things about the Taycan Believe it or not, the Taycan is the most aerodynamic Porsche to be ever manufactured. That's true. And the best part about this vehicle is that it retains its legendary styling. Now, Porsche has always had minimum air dam. And now that is the same thing that you see in the front bumper. So it doesn't have that huge covered bumper or uh, front fascia like the EVs. The Taycan is all about aerodynamics and efficiency. That's the reason why below the headlamps you get these additional air intakes. Now the air flows through and through and it hits the tire and again it goes through that and you have these additional air curtains. So the drag is reduced and efficiency goes up. With a drag coefficient of 0.22 Porsche has not left anything for chance. They have got the state-of-the-art technology and that is the reason why it comes with an adaptive rear spoiler. Now it comes in three different modes and it gets activated when it crosses the 90 km mark, the 160 km and of course the 200 km mark. So this is how they have ensured that this car is efficient and of course the most dynamic car in the Porsche range. Now the Taycan might look like a sports four-door coupe but in reality once you sit inside the car and you feel the ergonomics around the cabin you know it is more in the lines of the legendary 911. Now, when you look at the materials around, obviously it is a Porsche, so it is top of the line. It also comes with various different materials like uh, different kinds of leather. If you want to go all eco-friendly, then there'll be no leather at all. On top of that, the panels, you can change according to your own choice. Uh, there are uh, wooden panels, metal finish ones, and if you want to take a step further, then there are the carbon fiber ones. Now, if you look at the cabin as such, it looks more like a, a spaceship from a sci-fi movie rather than a car because you are literally surrounded by uh, so many displays here. You have the 10.9 inch infotainment system. Then you have this specially created curved instrument cluster. It's all digital. That's a 16.8 inch. Uh, in size and then you have the uh, HVAC uh, controls or the AC controls right here that too is all in uh, touch and virtual button and that has a display of 8.4 so when you look at the 10.9 inch uh, infotainment system it has all the settings that you need but it could have been a little bit more intuitive because there is a lag there is a second or two lag um, you can feel it and sometimes you may also end up touching the button twice so it could have been a lot more responsive uh, seamless as well because it is such an expensive car you do expect the state-of-the-art uh, touch panels 
Then you have the 16.8 inch curved instrument cluster. Now it comes with three different uh, dials and uh, it also comes with uh, touch buttons on the side, the control buttons here. Uh, you can uh, change the driving modes. Now there are uh, three driving modes, uh, actually there are four driving modes. Uh, there is a range, range is uh, eco and then you have normal, then you have sport and sport plus. Now in range it becomes a little bit more uh, efficient because all the controls are limited. So the, you know, the lights can't be too bright, uh, you can't uh, drive the car on full throttle. So these are, you know, little, little, uh, they are, these are little, little uh, things that Porsche has done to ensure that it doesn't drain out too much battery. Now coming to the 8.4 inch uh, display right here, it's a vertical display. It's not only your air condition controls, but also has uh, really helpful shortcuts like uh, shortcut to your navigation system, music control, uh, if you want to make a call, you can do so and even the setting buttons. Uh, but uh, we would like to also inform one more thing that initially the Taycan when it was launched it came only with uh, Apple CarPlay but now it does come with Android Auto. You also have these really classy looking um, AC vents but uh, you can easily be fooled by it, but you can't physically adjust the vents. So you have to go back to the infotainment system, press on climate, and then you use the touchscreen to uh, decide which angle you want the air vents to be. Now, this feature is not a first because it is available in the Tesla, but it is quite complicated because uh, with our sort of weather, we have long summers it does become a bit complicated because you got to go back to the system and then again do the settings. Now, um, if you look at a display right here, this is a 10 inch plus uh, display. This is an optional display for the front passenger. Uh, they get to control your infotainment system, your navigation, so all these basic features, they come here. And in the rear, which we'll show later on, there is a 5.9 inch display as well. So we'll take a look at that as well. The Taycan has a typical coupe like sloping roof so getting in and out is a bit of a challenge you gotta crouch down so if you have uh, elderly parents or family relatives then it can be a bit of a challenge for them uh, and also because it has a sloping roof you have limited headroom now I'm around uh, 5 feet 9 inch so it is just about okay for me but if you're taller than me or if you're even around six feet then yes it is going to be a problem for you uh, also when it comes to leg room it is just about enough leg room um, it is not very spacious it doesn't feel very spacious for your legs which is kind of a surprise because uh, this vehicle's length is almost five meters so um, there's a bit of a you know a mismatch in uh, space management here uh, in terms of uh, shoulder room there's enough shoulder room the seats are extremely good uh, extremely well contoured very supportive um, this place is ideal for two adults now they do offer Porsche does offer a third uh, seat here as you can see there's no seat here uh, but they do offer a third uh, seat but uh, as, you, as you can see, there's hardly any space, you know. So you might be able to squeeze in a child, but again, uh, there's no space for the leg. So it'll be more like a punishment or detention than anything else. So best is stick to a uh, two seat uh, formation here and you get an armrest. As you mentioned earlier, the Taycan also offers a 5.9 inch display and here it is it is your again uh, hvac control this is an accessory or an optional screen uh, it is very easy to use and uh, it is quite functional as well it is actually quite effective you can change the temperature or set the temperature according to your requirements so our first two points were the aerodynamics of the Taycan and of course its space age cabin now let's talk about the matters of the heart and that is the 79.2 kilowatt hour battery which churns out 321 bhp and it does 0 to 100 in just 5.4 seconds now we know that in electric cars the torque is instant but in case of the Taycan it doesn't give you that whiplash feeling 
When it comes to charging, if you opt for the 11 kilowatt standard charger, then it charges the battery from zero to 100% in roughly eight to nine hours. But if you go for the 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, then it can do somewhere around 5% to 80% in just one and a half hours. Now, Porsche does give you an option to opt for a bigger battery that is a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery. But if you opt for a bigger battery, no doubt you get a longer range. But you also got to keep in mind that it adds additional 77 kilograms. One of the standout features of the Taycan is that it comes with a two-speed transmission. That's right, because most of the EVs come with only one speed transmission. So what is the advantage of this? Well, it's quite simple. The first gear is on a lower ratio so that it ensures that there is plenty of acceleration and because it's an EV, there's no power lag at all, but it ensures that there's consistent power available. Now, most of the EVs have one problem. Once they reach their optimal speed or high speeds, they cruise for a while and then they start losing power. Now, this is where the second gear of the Taycan kicks in and ensures that it not only stays put and ma maintains that high speed, but also remains efficient as well. So the battery doesn't drastically drain out. The other feature that this car has is a new regeneration system. Now, we all know that all EVs have this system, but Porsche has given its own twist. Now, in most of the EVs, what happens is when you activate that regeneration system, you can actually drive with one pedal. Once you step off the accelerator, it just stops. Of course, there are different modes of it, but it can be intrusive or it can be quite a linear uh, experience, but it basically stops automatically so that it doesn't lose that deacceleration in energy. Now, in terms of the Taycan, what Porsche has done is that you drive like a normal internal combustion engine. It does not have that one pedal drive. So every time you press the brakes whenever required, it automatically regenerates and conserves that energy and the battery gets charged again. As a matter of fact, according to Porsche, they have said that they can regenerate almost up to 90% of their lost energy. Now that is very, very impressive. Now coming to the final point, driving dynamics has always been Porsche's forte. They have been legendary in that field. But the Taycan is not just any other Porsche. It is after all an electric, rather all electric sports car. So, has it somewhere been compromised, the driving dynamics? And in simple words, the answer is no, absolutely not. The benchmark was the 911 and the Taycan is undoubtedly the world's best EV when it comes to handling dynamics. All you have to do is just sit in the car, put your hands on the steering wheel and you can feel how well balanced and well weighted the steering wheel is. It provides that sports car like feedback, it is responsive, it is crisp and it doesn't really have any artificial weight at all. When it comes to handling, the Taycan just blasts in and out of turns like no one's business. It offers plenty of grip, there is so much control and because the Taycan, the one we are driving is the entry level one it doesn't have that insane 700 plus bhp which honestly you don't need it the 321 bhp ensures that you have a lot of control over the car and that makes it a lot more familiar it makes it predictable and you're also more at ease you're not wrestling with the car as well so in many ways you and the car are in sync and work together now if driving dynamics is porsche's forte then ride quality definitely is Taycan's. Its adaptive suspension is ideal for our Indian conditions. It goes over ditches, it goes over potholes very easily. It even does not, it ensures that the ride quality remains comfortable for the rear passengers. Yes, of course, 
if you encounter a deep pothole you have to be a bit careful because uh, the ground clearance is a bit low but even when it comes to that level you can increase the ground clearance the chassis can be lifted a bit so that option is also there so again as a whole package it is very much oriented to our conditions which not many sports cars can actually say Now the Taycan truly is an all electric sports car. Now we are not saying this because it wears a Porsche badge but because of its sports car like handling capabilities. Now on paper 321 bhp of power might not sound that much but trust me in real world conditions it is more than enough. Now it's obviously packed with a lot of features. now anything additional that you want costs a bomb but then that's not something new for a sports car now the base price as we said starts from 1.5 crores but it's never that price it shoots up to around 1.7 to 1.8 crores based on what you opt for but again it's got the luxury aspect it handles beautifully and the best part about this car is the way it rides so Would you opt for this all electric sports car? Well, you might have to give it a thought or two, but we would still like you to think about it and consider this as an option. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, then please go ahead and do so. Do let us know what you think about this video and uh, of course, please don't forget to click on that bell icon so that you receive notifications of our latest videos.